In this video, we're going to have a look at example 7 of our notes booklet. If f of x equals the root of x plus 1, find f dash of x using first principles. So looking at this question instantly, what I'm going to go for is I'm going to rewrite our f of x and it's equal to the square root of x plus 1. So we got that down. And then the second step is I'm going to write down the definition of f of x plus h. So it might seem like a bit of a redundant step, but it's always a really good idea to do this because the reason being that it's really easy, it's really easy to make a mistake with these definitions here. So every time I see an x over here, I'm going to turn it into an x plus h like so. Awesome. So I've got my two definitions down. Now the next step is remember we're going for a we're going for a derivative using first principles. So we're going to write out the first principles technique which is f dash of x is the limit of h as it approaches zero and that's going to be f of x plus h take f of x and that is all over h perfect now similar to example six i'm going to fiddle with this form once again because it's going to be really helpful to move the h outside or move this away from a fraction for now because these these terms here are going to become fractional with the technique that we're about to use coming up. So I'll just rewrite this, the limit. All right, my next step is I'm going to write out the definitions of these functions, f of x plus h take f of x. All right, now, this might look a little bit strange with what I've done thus far in the I've set it up almost as if I'm going to go for a fraction, but what's inside here isn't a fraction. And I'm going to say it's not a fraction yet. Notice that we've got x plus h plus one minus x plus one, and they're both in roots. What we want to do is we want to be able to access the x, h, and the ones in both of these terms. But because they're in a square root bracket, we can't actually do it. So what we're going to do is a sneaky trick. And because there's a minus here, we're going to use the, the property of the difference of two squares to break these open. Now, the way in which that works is I'm going to go parentheses like that. Then I'm going to multiply it by x plus h plus 1 plus x plus 1. And you might be saying, hold up, we can't do that. This isn't a fraction. If we multiply it out, then we're going to change the overall result of the equation. And you're absolutely right to say that. Rather, what we have to do is we have to express this left-hand term here as a, over a 1, and the right-hand side as x plus h plus 1 plus x plus 1. So effectively what we're doing in this section here is we're just multiplying the the terms here by a factor of 1 because x plus h plus 1 all squared plus x plus 1 squared it, or all over what, what's on the top there is simply equal to 1. So we're not changing the value here. We're just fiddling with it such that we can get access to the terms in here and the terms in here. However, the downside is we then have to deal with a denominator of this, but it's nothing we can't handle. So evaluating these lines as so, the difference of two squares property is going to remove the, the square root symbol. So we've gotten what we want. We've gotten rid of the square roots, but the consequence is that now we have to deal with these square roots on the bottom. But again, that's something that it's, it's worth the price to pay. So we're in a form where we've got x plus h plus 1, take x plus 1, all over this uh, square root of x plus 1, or x plus h plus 1, plus the square root of x plus 1. 
All right, so the next step is we're going to deal with the numerator here. So we're going to break open these brackets and then collect like terms. Perfect. Now, looking at the terms on the top, if we're going to collect like terms, then our x here is going to cancel out with our take x and our plus one is going to cancel with our minus one. So effectively, all we're left with is our, our plus h here, which is really convenient. So rewriting that. All right, excellent. So now we've got a simplified fraction by collecting all the like terms. Our next step is we want to deal with this term here. More specifically, we want to deal with this h in the denominator because if we evaluate the limit as is, we're going to get an undefined result. So if we take this h down in the denominator and we use it on the h in the numerator, these two h's, one and two, they're going to cancel each other out. And what that will look like is this. Perfect. So now we're in a step where we can evaluate the limit and still get a reasonable result coming out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to observe h, so the h's, as they approach zero. So basically what we get is the x plus zero plus one added to x plus one, and that's all over one like so. Awesome, and then simplifying, we're going to get x plus one plus x plus one all over one, and then simplifying once again, we're going to get two x plus one all over one. So therefore, therefore, our function or our f dash of x is equal to one over two root x plus one. So this has been an example of how we can take the derivative of a square root function as seen here using first principles.